How do you feel when you watch this video? Commander of Starliner, Butch Wilmore, now back on the space station, the third visit for both astronauts. The dance that the astronauts did as they came out of Starliner's hatch and met up with the ISS crew was fun to watch, and I prayed that they could do it again after they returned to Earth. However, that hope is really very fragile when the Boeing Starliner's thruster problems seem to never end. Repeating one mistake two times is unacceptable for the orbital vehicle especially a spacecraft built at taxpayer expense. NASA is mad. Why Boeing Starliner Thruster still fail? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. On Wednesday, June 5th, the Boeing Starliner spacecraft with two NASA astronauts aboard ultimately lifted off successfully from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. This is considered an important milestone after a decade in the making. At 1.34 p.m. ET on Thursday, June 6, the spacecraft docked with the ISS and officially became the U.S.'s second exclusive member of the space station, following SpaceX. It's the time that the trio, NASA, Boeing, and ULA, were happier than ever. By then, X was bursting with countless congratulations for the mission's success. ULA's CEO got his tie cut after his first people launch, a tradition usually after a flight director's first launch. NASA and Boeing could temporarily wind down after a very long time of being on the hot seat. Jim Free, NASA's associate administrator, said in the post-docking news conference, shared that the launch yesterday and docking today puts the Starliner on a path to certification to enabling continued exploration and science that benefits humanity. The press called this event with the dainty words, the only second private company to build and fly a human orbital spacecraft. Or the first time in history, three different crewed vehicles, Starliner, SpaceX's Dragon, and Russia's Soyuz, were all simultaneously docked at the station. While those behind the scenes who are on the ground are queuing the champagne, many wonder how Starliner can bring two NASA astronauts safely returned to Earth. It would be funny if an expensive government spacecraft was expected to benefit humanity, but failed to protect people on the way back home. Boeing Starliner, one more time, is at the center of criticism due to the technical problem. First of all, about the thruster malfunction. When the spacecraft was just 260 meters away from the space station, five of the craft's thrusters that control its attitude malfunctioned, leading to an order to stop the spacecraft. After consulting with Boeing and NASA engineers, the crew managed to recover four of the five thrusters, paving the way for Starliner's historical docking to the space station. Can't help but mention that this is the second time these small thrusters failed to operate during a Starliner flight, even though years have been spent fixing them. The previous time was in the uncrewed OFT-2 mission launched on May 19, 2022. By then, Rosie the Rocketeer, a test dummy suited in the blue Boeing in-flight spacesuit, was the first victim of these evil thrusters. Two orbital maneuvering and attitude control system, OMAX thrusters, failed during the orbital insertion burn, but the spacecraft was able to compensate using the remaining OMAX thrusters with the addition of the reaction control system, RCS thrusters. A couple of RCS thrusters used to maneuver Starliner also failed during docking due to low chamber pressure. The engineering team, afterward, tried to apply two small software fixes, but to no avail because they did not address the root cause. Starliner, one more time, failed to operate these attitude thrusters in the 2024 launch as a result. Referring to this matter, Steve Stitch, the program manager for NASA's commercial crew program, explained. But I think, I think we're missing something fundamental that's going on when inside the thruster. According to him and Boeing's representative, the failure of the thrusters was likely due to a data issue, rather than the thruster hardware or software. To be certified for operational crewed missions to the ISS, Starliner must handle thoroughly the thruster issue. But how long it would take? Stitch declined to speculate about it. The second problem making the Starliner's journey more rocky is involved helium leaks, which were first detected thanks to the May 6th launch scrub. The small leak was traced in a flange, where propellant lines feeding a specific reaction control system thruster come together in one of the doghouses. The Starliner is equipped with four propulsion modules, known as doghouses, and 28 reaction control system jets. Helium is used to push the propellant through the propellant lines, opening and closing valves in each doghouse as needed. 
Once the amount of helium is in shortage, the thrusters will not have enough propellant to maneuver properly to dock to ISS or re-entry. Despite the serious problem, Boeing and NASA then made a decision like rolling the dice with human lives, which is letting Starliner fly with that helium leak point. Indeed, they did not try to fix or replace the failed seal on that flange, because it would have delayed the launch for several weeks. Worser, they worked to convince NASA it was a manageable issue. NASA's Steve Stitch confidently declared that even if the shirt button size seal is removed from the flange, leading to a 100 times leak rate, the Starliner could still fly safely. His overconfidence and NASA's irresponsibility in general cost the astronauts, their families, and the public some nightmarish hours. Yes, several hours after launch, two more leaks were discovered. Then, another one was found after Starliner reached the space station. To handle the problem, the leaks were cut off by closing all the helium manifolds in the attitude thruster systems. These were only opened again before docking, while Starliner remained on a parallel course to the ISS. After docking, the manifolds were closed and Starliner's systems were checked again. A total of four separate leaks in a spacecraft sparked a wave of outrage in public opinion. In the post-flight conference, officials also had to acknowledge that these leaks appeared to be a more systemic problem than originally believed. Mark Nappi, vice president and manager of Boeing's commercial crew program, acknowledged that Boeing may not fully understand the root cause of the problem. They are very similar in the way that they're, they're behaving, so there's a good reason to believe that they may be similar. The serious issues, as said, would take NASA and Boeing the next couple of days to assess data collected during Starliner's flight. This aims to determine whether any additional tests are needed before Starliner undocks and returns to Earth with Wilmore and Williams. Stitch said could happen as soon as June 14th, but could also be delayed. While Boeing's workmanship is very bad, its official has mastered the art of downplaying the severity of the issues confronted by Starliner and its flight controllers. Those are pretty small, really, issues to deal with, he said. We'll figure them out for the next mission. I don't see these as significant at all. Additionally, Boeing explained that Starliner still had a considerable excess of helium on board and that they were not concerned about these issues affecting Starliner's flight back to Earth. In fact, there will be a lot of issues to work through before Starliner is cleared to fly home. Both helium supplies and the reaction control thrusters are necessary for a successful departure from the station and entry into Earth's atmosphere. To add to the severity of the problem, one investigation before the launch also warned that in the very remote chance of major trouble with two adjacent doghouses, including the one with the helium leak, the Starliner could lose redundancy for the thruster firing needed to drop out of orbit for re-entry. The Starliner was designed to support three redundant deorbit capabilities. In one, the braking burn is carried out with four powerful orbital maneuvering and attitude control OMAC thrusters. The burn also can be carried out with just two working OMAC jets or with eight smaller RCS thrusters by firing them longer than planned. In the right circumstances, with adjacent doghouse modules out of action, the Starliner could lose the full eight thruster RCS deorbit capability. Although NASA and Boeing came up with a redundant method for this problem, who knows if those OMAC thrusters will fail again as it was in 2022. Anyway, as I analyzed a lot in my previous videos, a rescue mission on SpaceX Dragon is always an optimized choice in this dangerous case. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.